In this video, I'm going to break down how chain analysis is attacking coin swap services today. Uh, this is a really important video because this is essentially how most people are acquiring Monero. So law enforcement and chain analysis has adapted to this, and I'm going to demonstrate how. So let's say you own a business that sells goods for cryptocurrency on the internet. You accept Bitcoin and Monero. Today, you received a large order amounting to $1,359 worth of Bitcoin. You then swap that amount into Monero and then send that Monero to a KYC exchange. The logic you have is that you are hiding your Bitcoin wallet or your Bitcoin address from chain analysis. What is the problem with this logic? So for this example, we're not actually going to be sending cryptocurrency, but we are going to walk through the steps. And along the way, I'm going to show you the metadata that you're leaving around. So following this example, I am sending um, this amount of Bitcoin for Monero, and this does equal um, the uh, amount of uh, $1,359. And kind of the reason why I picked such a specific number is because of the amount analysis of this transaction. So I'm going to get to that in a sec. So I'm then going to hit exchange. So, so Trocador is really great because what it does is it actually breaks down the different exchanges you could swap to as well as the ratings. And the ratings are to do with privacy. Now, if we hover over, this says B, and it says that it requires IP logs stored at Trocador only to be provided on an individual basis if requested by law enforcement. Uh, you have the same response for C's as well. And if we go all the way down here to the A's, it says no IP logging required. So for these um, really, really non-KYC swaps, they are evidently not logging anything. Therefore, you are paying a, a higher premium for that relative to these exchanges. Now, scrolling down here, we can get to the um, section where they talk about KYC. Basically, what they say is each of these exchanges, which this coin swap service is uh, working with, has their own KYC AML policy. And then they break down that each exchange is rated A, B, C, or D. And th these ratings are, you know, based on their privacy and their AML stuff, right? And they flat out say that sometimes the exchange will refuse to send funds based on failing an AML check, you know, failing to provide documentation on who you are. So I really like how Truckador does this, but down here is where it really gets interesting. It says your chosen exchange may also store your transaction details, amount, coins, and addresses. Please be aware some exchanges require logs of a user's IP user agent and accept language to be kept at Truckador. These can be seen on the exchange screen by hovering slash clicking the rating. Logs kept at Trocador are never sold or seeded to third parties and are only provided on an individual basis upon request from law enforcement. So this is really it. And this is the problem with these coin swap services. Not only are they collecting your IP address and your user agent, uh, and for those who don't know, user agent is your browser and your operating system, which they can see when you uh, connect to their website. Uh, and the accept language is just your language. So for example, I'm uh, American, so we're speaking American here. But you know, if you lived in Germany, it would be um, German or whatever. But in addition to that, though, they're also, in some cases, keeping transaction details. So what Truckador recommends is that you actually go to these specific websites and look at their privacy policy. So let's actually take a look at some of these privacy policies from these different websites and see what they say. So I am on StealthX, which was one of the exchanges that Truckador is dealing with. And if we scroll down here, we get to the types of information that they are uh, holding. So let's, let's start. Um, IP address, geographical location, browser type and version, operating system, referral source, length of visit, page views, website navigation paths, timing, frequency, Power of your service, use language settings, domain name you connected to us. That's a lot of information. They got, if you, if you have a profile, they're keeping all that information and transaction data. This is obviously problematic, right? By you, for example, just using a KYC exchange, your IP address is on that KYC exchange. So now if you connect to a, a coin swap service, your IP address is exposed. Hey, we have a match here. 
we're going to subpoena you and now get your transaction details. With those transaction details, you can then work backwards and look at your Bitcoin wallet, right? So this is one of those things where it doesn't even involve Monero in this case, right? Where they're just looking at uh, websites that are frequently used and connecting the dots. And it's my assumption that law enforcement is very, very involved with connecting with these coin swap services because these coin swap services have all of this logged data of people visiting their website. And as mentioned before, there's other data that they may have, such as your user agent and the times that you visited the website. This is on Change Now, which is um, another one of these websites that allows for you to do a coin swap. Let's see, what information do we collect? Email, transaction logs, data collected via cookies, and similar technologies. We may collect, collect information about your device, including where available your IP address, operating system and browser type, the user agent. And now let's check out Gardex. This is another exchange. Uh, personal information we may collect. While providing our services, we may collect personal, personal information, namely transaction information. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, and probably your IP, yep, your IP address, browser type. You get the idea, guys, okay? All of this information is also being collected on the KYC site. So it really comes down to them just linking these things together. And then, hey, we have the transaction information on top of that. It's logged. So they go to these websites and say, hey, here's a subpoena. Give us all the information. And guess what? They are going to give them all the information. Otherwise, they're going to be shut down. Regarding something like Cake Wallet, um, you know, I went through their privacy policy and it's pretty good. They really stress that they're not, you know, storing anything. They will work with law enforcement if law enforcement comes to them and they will provide any information they have on you. But it looks like for the most part, they're not really keeping anything. However, if you are using their service to coin swap, you then will have to be using a third party service. And if you go down to the third party service section, you'll see that they make it very clear that you have to like read the privacy policy of that third party. And these third parties are probably collecting data on you. So back to our example, let's say you go through with this. You send um, the cryptocurrency that you received, that Bitcoin, you send that uh, using the one of the swap services and you get Monero in return. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're, you're kind of antsy because you wanna you know cash this uh, money in the 10 blocks go, you then send it to the exchange, right? We already talked about this, timing analysis, right? You waited 10 blocks on the 11th block, you send it. This is, uh, this is going to give away that you were waiting and then you sent that Monero. Furthermore, the amounts match up, right? The exact amount of $1,359, less the transaction fee for Bitcoin, less the transaction fee from sending Monero will equal the amount you submitted on the exchange. So to summarize all of the metadata that we shared in this scenario, your IP address, if you weren't doing anything over Tor, or if you didn't even have a VPN, right? Your IP address is exposed when you're dealing with the coin swap service and it's being logged by both the coin swap service and the exchange. So this links you, the user agent, you can link your usage on that coin swap service and the exchanges really. The amount of Monero being sent matches exactly. If we just go down that path, the Bitcoin to Monero to the exchange, all you have to do is subtract the transaction fees. The timing of it, a transaction happened and then immediately after you're, you deposited the Monero into the KYC exchange. Well, not immediately, you had to wait for the 10 blocks, but the timing matches up. Um, your Monero swap is completely logged, right? So they know when it happened, then they have all the metadata surrounding it and it's also logged at the KYC exchange. So they can compare the two. And, you know, as I said, with timing analysis, that can cause them to like, you know, match them. And then if they work backwards, hey, they could take a step back and look at your Bitcoin address. Now all your Bitcoin transactions are visible. All the Bitcoin participants are linked to you are visible. They can work off of that and get more information. And finally, we've talked about poison outputs, right? So that transaction that we received from the coin swap that is going to have a poison output. And that poison output, once you know it, is in the ring signature that was submitted on the KYC exchange. In essence, this completely traces a Monero transaction. So what can you do? Obviously, don't use KYC. This is really the biggest problem, okay? 
The second thing, only use Monero. We're starting to see this with a lot of darknet markets where the people who were using them, they were accepting Bitcoin and Monero. So really they were just like law enforcement was just focusing on the Bitcoin part and then they can work backwards and see Monero involved as well. Don't immediately send transactions if you can because that helps with your plausible deniability and don't send exact amounts. So if you do swap it into Monero, don't send that like literal exact amount that can be Trace back to that amount that I mentioned earlier. Always read privacy policies if you can. It's super boring, but um, definitely be aware of the data you're giving up uh, if you can. Use Tor or at least a VPN. Um, you don't want your IP address just to be out there to be logged. And um, regarding churning, you know, this isn't really an exact science. Um, however, I will be having a video later on where I give my recommendations on you know, coin control and how churning Monero can help you. But the gist of this is if you do have or receive Monero, you know, sending it to yourself once or a couple times, there's no harm in it. The fee is low and it's going to separate you from that uh, coin swap exchange. A way to think about it is that these are services that are essentially a step below KYC, right? It's kind of like sub KYC, but they are still used to aggregate data on people using it. And all that data is being stored and all that data will be given to any sort of subpoena that is handed out to them. So anyways, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hey, if I helped iron up your OPSEC and you're looking and thinking, wow, I learned a lot today. I would really appreciate a donation. This channel is really only up because of donations from people like you. So thank you. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.